What's up, everybody? Today, we're just going to briefly go over some basics on file reading in case you encounter any problems that require you to get information out of a file instead of from the console. All of the code is available at replit.com slash at how to use a code. Um, if you want to just jump in and start fiddling with the code files, you can find it there. Um, otherwise, I'll try to keep this walkthrough very brief. Um, first, we're going to kind of generally go over the, uh, the uh, input file, um, and then we'll go through each of the three different languages. Um, so uh, the way I'm, I'm simulating this is the first line of the input file is n um, followed by that many numbers. So in this case, I've got an n equals 5 followed by five numbers. After that, I have five pairs of numbers. Um, and finally, I have a word, um, which coincidentally is five letters long. Um, the reason I threw the word in, even though that's not such a common thing to see on a Usico input file, um, is just to show about how to deal with reading strings after reading, um, after reading integers. Um, so I'm going to run through each of the three languages in order, uh, Python first, uh, Java next, and then finally C++. So feel free to jump to the language of your preference if you have any uh, uh, anything that you're not totally clear about from looking at the code file. All right, so um, going through the Python version first, I'm going to go ahead and hit run. Uh, essentially, first thing we want to do is we want to open the file. Now, when we read lines in Python, we're reading entire lines at a time, typically, not individual values. In C++ and Java, you would be able to read a single integer. Um, typically, in Python, you read an entire line. So some of the, some of the lines are a little trickier to handle. Um, for example, here we're reading in uh, n. We have to read the line and then cast it to an integer. Here I've got something you can just clipboard. Um, but basically, what's happening here is I'm saying I want to read a line, and then I want to split it, which would turn uh, for example, the line comes in as like five, three, four, two, eight, or whatever. That's going to turn it into a list where each individual thing is a string, four, two, and eight. Um, after reading in the line and splitting it into a list of strings, I'm then saying I want int x for every x in that list of uh, strings. And that's called list comprehension. This is essentially going to turn it into a list of integers. Um, and as you can see, I've printed the numbers, and those are appearing right here on the top right. Um, then for reading pairs, we have to have a for loop for i in range of n. Um, I'm using here, uh, this is like list comprehension, but with tuples. Essentially, I want int x for every x in fin read line dot split, which is then going to turn um, my individual pairs uh, that are, are still strings um, into uh, a, a list of integers, uh, a list of tuples of integers, excuse me. Um, and then we're pairing that to uh, the pairs uh, list here. Um, finally, demonstrating sorting and printing. Um, sorting is quite easy to do. Uh, and then that sorts by the first value. If you compare to the input file, I had three, five as the first value, then two, six, five, eight, three, nine, and one, three. Um, when I sorted it, it sorts by the first value first. And in the event the first value is equal, like in the case of three, five, and three, nine, then it sorts by the second value. Um, you see here, uh, I've read the word just by fin read line. That's actually quite easy to do in Python. Um, finally, I'm closing the input file. In order to open an output file, uh, it's very similar to opening an input file, except you have to put the W at the end to indicate that you're writing. And then you can just F out write whatever it is you want to do, uh, write. Um, one thing to note is that when you write, it doesn't work like the print function. We can't uh, do write and then separate things by commas. You have to cast things to strings, um, and you have to concatenate with the plus symbol. Finally, if you want to do a line break, you have to manually put the line break in. The write is not automatically going to add one the way the print function does. Um, finally, closing the file. Um, and you can see it ran here, and then our output file actually gets created when we run. Um, it says one, and the thing we were outputting was the first number of the first pair, which is this one, three, so that would have been the one. Um, so that demonstrates that that works. All right, moving on to Java. Um, for Java, we have quite a few imports. Uh, we need file for file reading. I happen to like the print writer uh, and the scanner for reading and writing. Um, some people use buffered readers and various other tools. Uh, I just find these to be easier to use. Um, I have array lists and collections for reasons that we'll get into uh, eventually. So <clears throat> first thing is, I wanted to have pairs of numbers. Um, there's not really a great pair class that's available in Java, so I typically make my own. Um, it's pretty simple, but essentially all I'm saying is that I have a, a static class pair which imp implements comparable. Um, I have to make my own compare to function to compare to some other pair. The way that works is if the first is smaller or if the firsts are equal and the second is smaller, we'll return one. Um, otherwise, if it's the other way around, we turn negative one. And then if all of the values are equal, we turn zero. And finally, I have a two string method to make it easier to print. Um, down here in the main, let me make this a little larger. Down here in the main, I'm going to run it too because it takes a minute. Um, down here in the main, I'm opening my scanner uh, to a new scanner, new file. One thing that's important to note is I put throws exception here. The reason why is because opening a, a file can potentially throw an exception. 
Um, typically, you would use a try catch in the real world because you would need to do something to help the user out if the file wasn't found. Um, that's not going to be the case here, so we're, it's easier just to be lazy and to throw this on the on the main. We wouldn't usually do this in the real world, though. This is this is less common to see. Um, uh, <clears throat> um, there's actually, and on that note, there's a lot of things we do in Usico that probably are not fantastic real world practices. I see a lot of use of global variables and that kind of thing um, for trying to write really fast, optimized code, and for trying to um, keep things simple um, and organized. A lot of times, it's nice to have global variables, but when you get into larger projects or you know, anything involving an uh, academic, we, we usually would never allow that. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we open the scanner to the file. Um, I'm reading uh, from the file using nextint, filein.nextint um, into n. Uh, I have to set up an array list for those numbers. This is then read with a for loop. So for i from zero to n, read one line from a file and add it to the array list. Afterwards, I'm printing the numbers. You can see the uh, numbers printed over here. Um, that worked just fine. Um, array list of pairs. Remember, that's that custom pair class that I created. Uh, once again, reading through, creating new pairs out of the two uh, numbers read from the file, um, and then just adding to the uh, pairs. Uh, for sorting, uh, I can use collections.sort. That'll automatically use my compare to method. And then you can see I've got one, three, two, six, three, five, three, nine. Um, uh, if you skip the Python one, uh, basically the way sorting pairs works is it sorts by the first value. Uh, in the case of three, five, and three, nine, where the first value is the same, it'll then sort by the second value. Um, we have uh, then uh, reading the final line. Now, this is kind of important to point out. Um, before reading the word that was on the, if you just review this file, there was a word on the bottom of the file. Because of the way next int works, next int only takes the integer. Um, so when I used that last next int to get that last pair, the last thing it got was the three, but there's still technically a line break. Um, sitting on the on the file buffer. So what I need to do prior to uh, prior to reading that word is I do one call to fin next line. Um, I, I don't need to store that anywhere. Um, it's just to just to clear the buffer. And then the second call to fin next line is what's going to get stored in the word. Um, I then can print out the word. Um, I close the file reader, uh, opening up a print writer, um, and the the same thing goes for the. Uh, for the exception that might be thrown because of the fact this is marked as throws exception, we don't have to do anything special for that. Um, we're printing out uh, the first number of the first pair. So I can do pairs get zero dot first should give me the one from the one three and then F out close. And that created the something that out file. Um, and you can see it's already got the one in it. Um, finally, for C++, uh, a couple imports here. I'm using vector, also algorithm. Uh, algorithms used for sorting. Um, some people just import the bits library. It's kind of up to your personal preference, I suppose. Um, I also use namespace standard. Uh, again, a lot of people use that. In the real world, we usually kind of frown on it a little bit, um, depending on exactly what you're doing, because um, there might be other namespaces that can cause conflict. But again, for competitive coding on Usico, it doesn't really matter. So whatever means that you have to type less things usually is a good thing to have. Um, OK, opening up the file stream is quite easy to do. It's just an IF stream. That stands for input file stream. I'm connecting that to something.in. Uh, I'm reading in my n value, setting up a vector of integers. I have a for loop that goes through all the numbers, reading them in and pushing them back into the numbers. Um, then finally here, I'm printing it out. Now in the other two languages, Python and Java, there's a real easy way to print out uh, a, a vector or a list or whatever it is that you have. Um, C++, we pretty much just do for loops. Um, so just, just to kind of uh, be aware of that. Um, creating a vector of pairs. In this case, the pair class is actually built into C++. We didn't have to do anything. There's not even an import for it. Um, I'd have to double check actually, that might come with vector, um, but pairs usually ready to go. Um, there, there's not a whole lot that you have to do to have access to that. And they've already got comparative uh, and access built into them. So creating individual pairs, um, reading in the first and second value and pushing them back to the list of pairs. When I sort, that's from algorithm, I can just sort from the beginning to the end. Um, this also will work on vectors. Um, I'll, do, I'll probably do a video on sorting at some point because there's a lot of different caveats to sorting. Um, here I'm then printing them all out. Um, again, I have to manually print pairs. Uh, pairs don't have a built-in uh, output override the way that um, the way that uh, Python does. Uh, so you have to you have to do them individually. Um, and then uh, finally, the word um, here I used fn word. This is not a get line. So there's a there's an issue with um, with in Java where if you do next int followed by next line, um, the uh, the next line will get the uh, line break from the previous line rather than getting the word on the next line. 
That actually is also the case in C++, but if you're just doing fin, this is sort of like next. So I guess the closer comparison for Java would be if instead of doing next line, I just did next instead. Um, and then I could get rid of that. Um, so different things to watch out for, but anytime you're doing a, a read line, you have to watch out for uh, whether or not the, the buffer has been cleared because there might be a line break left over on the buffer from the previous integer. Um, so any reading in the word, printing out the word, closing the input file. Uh, for output stream, I don't have to, some, some languages require you use a W. Um, we don't have to do that. Um, we just, by the fact that it's an OF stream indicates that it's an output file stream. Um, we're opening it to something dot out. Um, we can write out uh, the first uh, value of the first pair. So I'm doing pairs square bracket, oh, that should be pairs square bracket zero dot first. I'm gonna do the first value of the first pair. Let's rerun that. Of course, it's going to run really slow on me, isn't it? And it doesn't look like it's going to work. So anyway, um, those are file readers. And again, the code is available on uh, uh, replit.com slash at how to use the code. Um, and uh, other than that, I hope that helps you out. And uh, good luck.